out to mom in Nottingham. Joy and a delight to be uh, in your midst again here today, this lovely Wednesday that God has given to us. Not the only thing, of course, God's given to us. The gift of His uh, Son, the gift of His Word, if you'd like to have a copy of God's uh, written Word, it's uh, offered to you quite freely and without any cost or any obligation to you, and uh, you're simply and only for the taking. Uh, read, meditate upon the person of God's Son. He's altogether lovely. He's beautiful. He's uh, called in the Bible. He's called the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, the fairest of 10,000. I tell you, he's altogether lovely. And there's something that he loves doing. He loves saving sinners. If you'd like to have a copy of God's Word, please do feel free to come and ask for one. Gladly place into your hands. So the Bible does say, don't you know? In case you don't know, that's why we're here, because there's a lot of people who don't know. And you can't be saved without knowing. So we have to bring, we have to bring the message to you. We have to inform you, enlighten you, in order that, well, that you might, uh, by God's grace, that you might be brought to trust in His Son, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son up to the death of the cross. So. God loves you, and Christ died for your sins. Now you might remonstrate, you might complain, you might uh, mock, you might jeer, you might reject that, but nothing can change it. Absolutely nothing can change it, because God himself is unchangeable, and what he has spoken and what he has done is unchangeable. God so loved the world, God loves you, nothing of sinners, and Christ died for your sins. Now whether you accept that or reject that, well that's down to you. That's your responsibility. That's your call. But you can't change it. You can't change the facts, no matter how much. No matter how much you oppose them, no matter, no matter how much you argue against it, no matter what clever arguments, so-called, you might bring against it, you can't change the facts. And so we bring the facts to you in order that uh, believing them, the facts that is that God has revealed, that which God testifies of in His holy and His precious Word, the revelation of his love. Not, not my friends, not religion, not religion. God, the Bible does not say God so loved the world that he gave us a bunch of religion. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave, he gave us his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish in their sin, that is, die in their sin, and go to a lost eternity in their sin, and be lost forever. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting, eternal life. Just been talking to one man just a few moments ago, and don't you know he called himself a universalist? He thought that there was such a thing as good atheists, you know, that, uh, well, that God would kind of have some kind of favor on, like, you know. But here's the thing, friends, you know, this salvation of which we speak, it's not, it's universal in the sense that God so loved the world, that God loved the mankind of sinners, 
but it has to become particular. It has to become personal. You have to personally, personally, deep down and personal, you have to have dealings with his son Jesus Christ. You have to believe on him in order, in order to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is God's work and you shall, you shall be saved. Salvation is what we're about, Nottingham sinners. Salvation for you, Jesus, who loved sinners, Nottingham sinners, and gave himself for them, that through faith in his name, you might be saved. So the word of God for you here today, Nottingham, the book of Psalms again, the Lord sits enthroned, that's Jesus, over the flood, the Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. King forever, that's Jesus. He's the king of glory. And he rules and reigns from his throne. But his throne's not in Buckingham Palace. His throne is a cross. And from his throne he rules and reigns throughout all the world, all creation. He holds everything, all things in his hand. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, that he doesn't, no realm at all, that he does not rule and reign over. He reigns over what you call nature. The wind and the waves, he controls them all. Creatures great and small, he rules and reigns over them all. And he rules over mankind. There's nothing, nothing, nothing I tell you happens in God's creation, in all the world, that doesn't happen without the permission of King Jesus. He's a king, he's a king of glory. He's glorified in heaven. He became one of us. He stepped down into this world, became a man. He lived and loved, loved sinners, the worst of them and the best of them. He loved, he died, he went to that cross, not because he had done wrong, but because you have nothing of sinners. He went to that cross in love in order that you might be redeemed in order that you might be saved, in order that you might be washed, in order that you might be made clean, in order that you might be made fit for God, fit for heaven one day. He died on that cross, and he rose again from the dead. He's ascended back to heaven from where he came, sent of his Father, God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, He's back in heaven and he's ruling and reigning, the King of glory, King forever, Jesus. And he reigns in grace. He's the King of grace. And he dispenses grace, free grace for Nottingham sinners. What's grace? It's a gift. Free gratis, you know. You don't have to pay for it. Grace. You can't work for it. You can't be good for it, you can't be religious for it, you can't do anything for it because the moment you say that you do, it's no longer grace, it's no longer free. King Jesus, the King of grace, he dispenses his grace, he gives it to whoever he wishes to give it to. And how does he do it? Through the preaching of the gospel. That which I'm doing here today, telling you about him, telling you about the King of glory, telling you about the King of grace, the one who gives grace, freely gives grace to sinful men and women, even those, even those who have rejected him in the past, even those who have cursed him, even those who have blasphemed his name, even those who have transgressed his law, 
I tell you the worst of nothing of sinners. Christ died for your sin. Grace. That's the grace of God. And that free grace of God is offered to you here this afternoon. Through Jesus Christ, the King, the King of grace, the King of glory. His grace is offered to you that by His grace that you might be saved, saved from sin, saved from your guilt, young man, and saved from all the consequences of your sin, the sin, the guilt, the shame, the blame, saved, salvation. He's the King of glory. He's the King of grace. The grace that brings salvation to all men. All men who will receive it. That's all that you have to do is to receive the offer, the free offer of grace. Freely offered, you freely receive and you get that which is offered and what is offered, the salvation. The salvation by the grace, by the grace of Jesus Christ offered to you here this afternoon in the city of Nottingham. He came to his own, his own people, but his own people did not receive him. They rejected him, they refused him, but to those who did receive him, Jesus that is, he gave them the right, the authority to become children of God. It's that simple. All right, ma'am, how are you? Good. You're a Christian, ma'am? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. Have a nice day. So you see, my friends, grace, the free grace of God, so wonderful. All you have to do is reach out the hand in faith, but it has to be in faith. You know, it has to be believing. You reach out the hand of faith and you take the gift, you take the free grace of God in Jesus Christ and you get salvation. And you get delivered by the grace of Jesus. You get delivered from everything that harms you, spoils your life, takes the life out of you that will bring you to everlasting destruction if you don't receive the grace of God. You go on and on and on right to the end of your earthly existence. You go on rejecting the free grace that Jesus offers you today for the end of that is everlasting destruction. But God so loved the world, the world of sinners. God so loved you that he gave, he sent his only, his only son, Jesus Christ, sent him into the world to purchase salvation for you. It is sir. But the salvation was in John 2, he told you to stop spending money. Hey, in John 2, he told you to stop spending money and he overturned the tables. I don't know what you're talking and about. What are you all doing? He was talking about, he was talking about, he was talking about religious people, self-righteous religious people. The world, nothing of the world is full of them today. No, 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 no. Right. You've got it wrong, sir. If he was I've talking, got it wrong, then, he was talking about a limited Then how do you speak different species on the body of Christ? What do you mean? What do you mean? You can go and have a look at the body of Abraham. Go and have a look at all the other gods that have got different faces in that because only, of all the species on their skin. How do you put them on then if you know that? There's only one God, sir. There's only one God, sir. Then you'll be an ignorant to the question, an ignorant to science, young man. Well, Why? because your book doesn't help you. I'm sorry, sir, but I, I, I do not, I do not understand you. I do not understand the question. But the issue that the man raises, you know, and Jesus went into the temple one day and he overturned all the tables of the money chamber, cha money changers, because what, what the people had done. In the temple, they had turned, they had turned the religion of God, they had turned it into a money-making business, just like the health and wealth prosperity gospel preachers today. 
and that made Jesus angry. There's some things that, that does make that, that does make Jesus angry, and one of them is one of them is that when people take the religion of God, the religion of the Bible, the gospel of His free grace, when they turn it into something that it's not, and they and they by doing so they keep people from the kingdom of God. They keep people from the grace of God. That made Jesus angry. Because you see, my friends, salvation is by grace. Jesus is the king of glory. He's king forever. And he's the king of grace. And he dispenses grace. Free grace. It's not about money. You can't buy it. Come without money. The prophet Isaiah said, you can't purchase God's salvation. You can't buy it. It's not for the rich, it's for the poor. It's hard, not impossible, says Jesus, not impossible, but it's very hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because riches make men arrogant and proud and self-righteous. It's the poor, you see, who enter the kingdom of God. Those who are poor in spirit, poverty of spirit, the lowly, those who see themselves as broken sinners, sorryful for their sin, and they reach out the hand of faith to Jesus, the King of grace, and they receive his grace. So, my friends, Jesus did not come to make you healthy, wealthy, prosperous. And you can give money, you can give money to these charlatans, you can give money to these preachers, but that will not profit you any. Not one whit closer to God will that bring you. It will not bring the blessing of God upon you. Only the grace of God, the free grace of God, free grace of God, that's what the word grace means, Nottingham sinners. It means free, free gratis. You don't pay for it. You don't do for it. You don't be religious for it. You just simply receive the grace of God in Jesus Christ. And grace is what you get. The grace of God, the favor of God, the kindness of God, the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. So reach out the hand today, nothing else. Reach out the hand of faith today and receive the grace of God. Believe, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And here's your warrant. Here's your warrant to believe. You have a warrant to believe. The word of God, the testimony of Jesus himself. He says to you, believe. Only believe, he says. Only believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to him, to the man, to the woman who believes. The grace of God can be yours. Receive the offer. But then he's not just the king of grace. He's, he's the king of power. He's the king of power. He's a king with power. All authority in heaven and earth is given to Jesus. All authority. Every realm of the world, the world, history, politicians, rulers, all creatures great and small, they're all under the authority of King Jesus under his authority and his power. And they don't do anything. They don't do anything without his permission. But Jesus reigns. He rules in power. He rules in power to save. He has the power, he has the authority to save you today. He has the power to save, I tell you, the worst of sinners. What kind of sinner are you today? Nothing happened. What kind of sinner are you? How would you classify yourself? 
Would you classify yourself maybe just plainly and simply as an atheist? Or maybe you would class yourself maybe as a, a drunkard maybe, a drug addict? Maybe perhaps you've been locked into the drugs so long and you weep and you cry at night longing, longing to be free from it. I tell you, there's power in Jesus. Jesus wields the power, the authority to set you free. Or maybe perhaps you would describe yourself as a homosexual sinner. Or maybe just plain ordinary sexual immorality, that kind of sin. Oh, there's all kinds. The Bible lists them all. But King Jesus has the power. I tell you, there's no sin greater, deeper than the grace of God in King Jesus. He has the authority to set you free. One word from him and you're set free. The chains are broken. And the captive is set free. That's one of the class of people that Jesus came for. He says, I came to set the captive free. And he has the power, he has the authority to do so. All authority in heaven, amongst angels, in heaven. All authority on earth, all authority amongst creatures of mankind. All authority, authority, power over you, the power to set you free, to break the chains, to set that habitual, ingrained sin in your heart and your life, and to set you free and liberate you to become, to become a follower, a worshiper of King Jesus. He has the power. I don't, I can only tell you. I can only tell you about him. I can only tell you about his love, his grace, and his power. I can only tell you, but you've got to come to him in order to get the grace and get the power to be free. When you come to him, you come to him with those stretched arms. You come to him with nothing in your hand. You come to him with nothing. You come to him as nothing. You just cast yourself upon him, the king of glory, the king of grace, the king of power. You connect, you connect by faith with Jesus. You believe into Jesus and the power begins to flow. And the grace begins to flow. And you're liberated. You're set free. Free for time and free for eternity. Never to be in chains again. No condemnation. He takes away the sin. He takes away the guilt. He takes away the shame. He takes away the blame. He takes away the condemnation. He takes away... He takes away all that would destroy you. Not just in this life, in this world, but through all, all eternity. Because there's an eternity to come, my friend. This world is not all that there is to it. No. No, no, my friend. It's appointed for man to die once. After that, that's not the finish. That's not the close of it. No, then comes, then you stand before God, God in judgment, you stand before Jesus. Jesus and God being the same, exactly the same. You see, you look at what Jesus did. You look at what Jesus did. You know, my, my, my Muslim friends, if I might call them that, my Islamic friends, they come to me and they say to me, they get this from the mosque. They say to me that, that Jesus never ever said that he was God. He didn't have to. He proved that he was God. He raised the dead. He healed the sick, terminally diseased. He opened the eyes of the blind. He proved that he was God. He demonstrated that he was God. 
and he died on the cross and he rose again from the dead. Amen. Amen, brother. He's alive and alive forevermore. He's king forever. And I tell you, Muhammad will bow the knee to him. And every Muslim, but I tell you, there's Muslims all over the world coming to Jesus and finding life and love and salvation. There's Muslims in Iran, they're taking their Qurans and they're throwing them away and they're casting themselves upon Jesus and they're getting salvation. They're getting life and love and lasting joy because they're coming to the God of salvation, coming to the King of glory. They're coming to the King of grace and power, the power to set you free. Maybe that's your problem today. Nothing of, I don't know. Maybe your sin is religion, just dead putrid religion. Maybe you got it from your parents. I don't know. Or maybe it's just what you've grown up with, you know. Religion, religion, just dead religion that accomplishes nothing in your life, does nothing for you. What's your religion doing for you? What did it ever do for you? Does it bring you love? Does it bring you light? Does it bring you life? Does it bring you salvation? Does it set you free from the horrible lust in your souls? Hey, young man, hey, tell me, hey, does your religion does it set you free from your lusts? Jesus will. Jesus will. He's the king of glory. He's the king of grace. He's the king of power. He sets the slaves free. He liberates. He takes away the condemnation. And you say, how can he do that? Because he took it himself. He took it upon himself on that cross. That's what he was doing, dying upon that cross. The only good man that ever walked the face of this earth. He died on that cross, a substitute, taking our sins, taking your sins, nothing up. God loves you. Christ died for your sins. What are you going to do about it? Receive him. Receive him and you shall be saved. Not the benefits, not the grace, not the love, not the life, not the benefits. You receive Him, you receive Christ, and you get the benefit. Jesus Christ, King forever, and throne. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is both King and Lord. Nothing of sinners. Ah, oh, do it today. Help me bow the knee before King Jesus. Worship the King, all glorious above. Kneel, bow down before Him. Adore Him. Trust Him. Trust in Jesus. That's what wise, that's what wise people do. And they get forgiveness. They get life. And they get love, and they get joy, and they get everlasting happiness. And all for the taking, just for the taking. You don't have to jump through hoops. You don't have to jump through religious hoops. You don't have to dress in religious clothes. Huh? And do religious things. Tell you the one thing that gets at my goat is religion. And even and even churches, even churches turn this, this lovely, lovely gospel of mine, even they turn this into, into religion. And it doesn't do anybody any good at all. Jesus, 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 the King of glory, the great I am. The everlasting God, the wise counselor, and his counsel to you today is trust in me. Trust in me, says Jesus, and I will make you free. He's the 
a king. And uh, it goes on to say, may the Lord give, give strength to his people, power to his people. And that's what he does. He gives power to his people. Who are his people? His people are those who trust in him. His people are those who worship him. His people are those who adore him. His people, robot people. That's how you become one of his people. You receive his blood sacrifice that he made on the cross. That's how he purchases his people with his own blood. So that we, his people, we can say, I can say I'm a, I'm a blood-bought child of God. Not because, not because of something I did. Not because of anything in me. But simply because Jesus bought me. He paid for me. He paid the price for me to set me free. I was a slave to sin for 36 years of my life. And King Jesus came to me and he purchased me. He said, I'll buy that slave. I'll pay the price. My blood on my cross. I'll pay for his sins. I'll set him free. And that's what he did 43 years ago. And they do for you today, nothing of sinner. His blood, his blood pays the price. And his, his blood, that's where the power is. That's where the power is. In the wonder-working blood of the Lamb. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless and the white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, the power working, wonder working power of the blood of King Jesus. The power, the strength to liberate you, set you free. That blood touches your soul. You're a free man, you're a free woman. I tell you, there's not a sin. There's not a deep dyed sin. There's not an ingrained sin. There's not a disgusting sin. There's not a revolting sin, I tell you. That Jesus applying his blood to it can withstand. His blood. His blood washes. His blood cleanses. His blood breaks, cancels the power of sin, of all sin. And sets the sinner free. The blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ. So you see, you can have religion. You can have religion without a cross. But that's no good. Because you got no blood sacrifice. And God says without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. So if you've got religion without the blood of Jesus, then you've got no forgiveness. You've got no blood in your religion. Then you're, you're, you're not free, you're not a free man, you're not a free woman. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? You must be, you must be, nothing of you must be. Only the blood can cleanse you. Only the blood of Christ, the blood of a king, the king of glory, the king of grace, the king of power. He gives strength, he gives power to his people. Through his wonder working, the wonder working power of his blood. Break, cancel the power of sin that holds you in his vice like grip. Won't let you go, won't let you free. Hold you in chains, hold you in darkness, keeps you in misery. The blood of Jesus Christ applied by faith, I tell you to your heart, to your soul, and you're a free man, you're a free woman, forever. And a worshiper, adorer of the King of grace and glory and power. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Peace, peace, peace that passes all understanding. 
He's with God, how? Through the blood of his cross. That's how God became a man. God became a man. Astonishing, amazing. Unbelievable for you, Nottingham. Unbelievable to you. But the king give you grace today to believe. The king give you the grace to believe today. God became a man and walked the face of this earth and permitted, allowed himself to be taken and nailed to a cross and his blood shed upon that cross in order that you might have peace with God and that you might know the peace of God by trusting in what God in Christ himself has done in becoming one of us and dying, rising from the dead, ascending, exalted, glorified, King forever, the King of glory, Jesus, Jesus, I offer to you today the King of glory. I offer him to you as a Savior. My Savior God would have all meant to be saved. Why are they not all saved? I've no idea. But I know that you can be saved today should you receive the offer, the free offer, the free grace of God. Receive Jesus. Receive the gift of God, the free gift of God, in order that you might know that grace, that power, that you might know that love, that you might know that freedom, that you might know that forgiveness, that you might know that power, the wonder-working power, blood of the Lamb, wash you, cleanse you, make you whole. What can wash away my stain, says the hymn writer, nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What will make me whole again, he says, nothing but the blood of Jesus. I offer him to you today. Don't go away without him. Take him home with you in your heart by faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And in my hand, in my hand, I hold, I hold your warrant to believe the word of God, the written word of God. God so loved the world, you, he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This, this knocking up, this is your warrant to believe. You go to hell, you go to hell over the, tra you go to hell trampling over the blood of Christ. And you'll have no mercy, no mercy. But mercy is set before you, mercy, grace, grace. Grace, grace is offered to you today. The gospel, the good news, the king of glory, the king of grace and power who came down into this sin-cursed world to save, to save a people for himself, to save you. Will you come to him? Will you trust in him? Come without money. Buy without price, freely offered, freely received. Turn from the sin and turn to Jesus. Turn to the Savior, the Lord God Jesus Christ. Turn to Him. Turn, turn, turn. Why will you die? 
when there's life to be found in Jesus. Turn, turn, turn. Repent and believe the gospel. Nothing of sinners. Repent, repent, repent. And believe the gospel. Like to have a copy of God's written word. Offer to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you. You're simply only for the taking. You'd like one, you come and ask for one. May God bless you, Nottingham, and the mercy, mercy I see upon your precious, precious, never dying souls.